Now this right here is a pretty flower, but it's not just a pretty goddamn flower, it's also a pretty fascinating flower because it's the only species in its genus, and that's the genus Clarkia in the evening primrose family, is the only species in that genus which produces a floral scent and is pollinated by sphinx moths. The rest of the members of Clarkia, the Clarkia genus, are pollinated by bees, but this tender bastard grows only on this serpentine talus and uh, emits a fragrance unlike the rest. So it's the only species in its genus that's evolved a scented flower, and they do smell pretty nice. But uh, you could also tell by how massive the corolla is compared to other species that it's not pollinated by bees, it's pollinated by sphinx moths, which of course are active at night. Anytime you see a big white or light colored flower, uh, it's pollinated by bats or moths or uh, perhaps some other winged uh, pollinator. Uh, and it's pollinated at night. White, of course, the reason many large flowers, especially in a cactus family uh, or in the Solanaceae, some of the Brugmansias do the same thing. The reason they have those big white flowers or yellow flowers, they just got to be light colored. You don't want a dark red flower when you're getting pollinated at night. Your pollinators are never going to be able to see you. Anyway, these bastards are pollinated at night, as you can tell by that large white corolla. But they also have a very weird habitat affinity, and it's to grow on this serpentine talus. Of course, serpentine being a pretty rare rack on the surface of the earth only occurs in a few localities and is synonymous with the subduction zone. So once again, we have geology dictating uh, what grows in an area and uh, not only causing, uh, not only dictating what grows, but also uh, in its own way causing speciation, as serpentine tends to do. You can see more of those. Uh, more of those Clarkia breweries over there, which is the species I'm talking about. You got this nice serpentine delphinium, serpentine larks, larkspur, and a ranunculaceae. And then uh, you got uh, some uh, cool native bunch grasses, as well as that the uh, Acanthomintha lanceolata, which is called a thorn mint that's in the Lamiaceae as well. All growing on this serpentine talus. Well, now there's nothing like serpentine talus to really get me gone. Here's a beautiful little buckwheat, Iriagonum. And now, as I uh, filmed this, I'm being not on by some uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of cute orange flies, but uh, it's it's it doesn't feel too good. I had to kill a couple of them. I'll be honest with you. And there's that Acanthomintha, which again, like many members, like almost all members of its family, the sage family, Lamiaceae, produces terpenes that humans uh, tend to think smell nice. Sometimes they smell like weed. Now, the genus Acanthomintha has, I think, three or four species in it in California. The thorn mints. And, of course, the type of flower that, is, that uh, many, many uh, plants in the salvia family have is called the verticillaster, which is basically this, uh, this circular cluster of flowers that encircles the stem. You can see it right there. Nice up close and personal. Now, those spines are just basically bracts. They're just bricks that subtend the flower and prevent it from being not on by herbivores before it gets a chance to flower and, uh, of course, set seed. It's an annual. Over here, you got a nice streptanthus brassicase. You can barely even see this. Look at it. Just blends in perfectly. Now, if you look close at those leaves, they got these little orange dots on them. And now those are thought to uh, mimic butterfly eggs so that it... Uh, so that, you know, other butterflies don't, you know, they, they, they roll up on it, okay? And they say, geez, you know, someone's already been here. I, I'm not going to lay my eggs there because they're already laying there. Or it could be, you know, predatory uh, predatory eggs. You know, basically, it's just a, a camouflage, not a camouflage, but, you know, uh, basically to fool anything that might bother this plant. You know, a lot of the strep taint is then, that's in the kale family, of course, brassicaceae. Uh, have involved have evolved very uh, very high tolerance to serpentine as well as a, a, a whole arsenal of uh, camouflage tactics as well as you see that butterfly mimicry going on right there you also get up close you could see very papillose that is warty uh, warty leaves as well as the uh, tiny little glandular hairs but these buckwheats are really goddamn delightful aren't they just a little Little Rosetta basil leaves, like a lot of them have. Ariagonum's a really uh, fascinating genus, you know. But, uh, you know, you try and study it, and next thing you know, 
you know, you're going to be uh, you know, getting therapy appointments, maybe getting lobotomies, electroshock treatments, and then probably you just end up working in some depressing retail store uh, once you've uh, realized you can't fulfill uh, your passion of uh, learning the goddamn genius because they're just too hard. There's too much variation, too much species.